this lesson we're going to learn how to create a cutout background photo or a cob photo. So we're starting in InDesign and we're going to use our technique of bringing up the links panel, control clicking or right clicking on the photo that we would like to edit and going to edit with Photoshop. That's going to bounce us over to Photoshop so we can get started. Is basically we want to create a selection along here and have a transparent background. So to get started, I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques you can use. One is the quick selection tool and you can change the size of this. This kind of works like a brush. And that creates a pretty decent selection to get started with. Option two is to use your lasso tools. You can do several different methods with this. The magnetic lasso tool selects areas based on pixel contrast. You can see we can roll rather quickly around edges. You can also use the polygonal. And with this you need to click down, so I'm clicking repeatedly, click, 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 click. This might be a little more specific, but it is going to take a little more time. And your final option is to use the pen tool. And this is going to be similar to using the polygonal in that you're going to need to click. Um, a good option between using this as opposed to the polygonal is you're going to have a little more control over curves um, with this tool. So I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to use my quick select. I'm going to show you kind of a quick way to get a good selection going. So that got a decent start to this. Obviously I have some areas I want to improve on. So what I'm going to do is enter Quick Mask. And that's this button down below your default foreign background. You're going to click that. And so basically everything that is red is what we want to have in the photo. Everything in color is going to be removed. I'm going to exit that for a second. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different, show you a secondary option. If I shift command I, I can select the inverse, select quick mask again. Now I can kind of have the opposite, so red is what I'm going to remove. And this is actually my kind of preferred method. And I'm going to use my brush tool, and I just want a nice default brush. Um, it might be helpful to have it not be incredibly um, diffuse or have a really hard edge. And so I'm just painting and if you're not getting red paint just switch your foreground and background color. Conversely if you accidentally do that switch your foreground and background color come back through. Painting with white will remove that. And so you can navigate around zooming into areas that you know need help keyboard shortcut for brush is B, so I can toggle back and forth between using it. Spacebar gives me the hand tool so I can navigate around and use my left bracket to make my brush smaller. X to swap my foreground and background, start painting with black again. I just might want to smooth out some of these edges that look a little rough. Make the selection a little more diffuse. And right bracket to increase my brush. Alright, I'm pretty pleased with that result. So now I'm going to exit my quick mask. Notice I still have uh, what I want to have in the cob selected. 
I'm going to actually add a new layer and I'm going to copy this material from the background to the new layer. Then going to hide my background and then I can go through and tweak this, see if there's anything else I want to delete or add. At that point I'm ready to save my document so I'll go file save as. I'm going to save this as a cob. Hit save. Now if I want this checkerboard to remain a transparency I need to make sure I select save transparency. You can say yes to this. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And even though I have that background layer, it's hidden, so it's not going to appear when I import it into InDesign. I'm going to go back, and there's my photo. Click Open. And we have a little resolution issue we need to resolve, so we're just going to handle that by increasing our display to high, and there you have it. So now we've created a cobbed photo. In our next video, we're going to look at how we can run text along this cob, as well as flow text into columns.